It's the season to be jolated. Hello there, mountain bikers. Welcome to Vital MTB's Gear Show. It's the last episode of 2020, so we're going to go out with a bang. We've got a ton of new stuff to go through with you today, including new protection, winter gear, and more new bikes than you could ride in a day. But we're going to kick the show off by unveiling a new range of shoes that has been teased for a few months already by now on social media. So go ahead, pour yourself a hot drink, or maybe a cold one if that's your preference, and get comfortable. Let's dive in. Question mark MTB first popped up in our feeds a few months ago, and there's been plenty of speculation around what's behind it. Well, speculate no more, it's a whole new shoe range from Crank Brothers. Three new flat pedal variants and six new clipless variants, no less. Why jump into the shoe market now? Crank Brothers built their company around pedals, but they felt the time had come to stretch themselves beyond the pedal in an effort to gain more control over the shoe to pedal interface. After years of watching their own athletes, as well as other riders, carry out all kinds of modifications to their shoes to improve the clipless experience with their pedals, Crank Brothers wanted the opportunity to really design the shoe around the pedal. And while they were at it, how about making a BOA-equipped flat pedal shoe, which is still a novel concept in and of itself? There have been some previous attempts, like this Scott shoe, but nothing really mainstream to date. The mallet is the clipless family, made to match with the mallet pedals, of course. There are two main lines of product, the Mallet and Mallet E, the latter being intended for enduro and adventure use and not specific to e-biking as you might have otherwise suspected. Each model exists in three different variants, one equipped with the BOA lacing system and two that feature laces. There are also three different colors to choose from in total and the prices range from 149 to 199 US dollars. Crank Brothers spent a lot of time to optimize the shoe to pedal interface which has resulted in the specific shape of the cleat box you can see here. The mallet shoe also features the race zone, 5 mm of extra room for moving the cleats backwards. This feature is not present on the mallet E. The ramps on either side of the cleat box are meant to help guide the pedal into the cleats, and while they have been optimized to work with the Crank Brothers mallet pedal and cleat system, they will also work fine with SPD, thanks to a shim system. The outsole is made from a less sticky rubber than that found on the flat pedal shoe, which we'll get to in a minute, with a tread pattern designed to help when walking around or hike biking. There is a shank to increase stiffness and help with power transfer, but the toe area remains flexible for better comfort when off the bike. The uppers are made with modern materials, while the construction and styling are the fruits of the work of several key experts from around the industry. The result is a shoe that definitely looks like it was made for cycling, but that will also pass for normal should you need to wear it around town, especially the non-BOA versions. All the necessary features are present, breathable mesh windows, TPU protection in key areas, a padded tongue and hidden lace eyelets. The non-BOA versions have a clever little lace pocket that further underlines the sleek look and helps keep your laces secure on the trail. To improve the customer experience, the mallet comes with the Crank Brothers cleat pre-installed in a neutral position. On the trail, we got on well with the new shoe from the beginning. The mallet is comfortable and supportive in action without any apparent hotspots or other types of discomfort. The shank is stiff and the overall level of power transfer of the shoe is good, although not as efficient as a more XC-oriented shoe. Crank Brothers retained quite a bit of flexibility in the uppers, which may be hard to get used to if you typically run something more supportive. It is not flimsy by any means, but we found that the outside edge of the shoe felt like it was hanging off the edge of the pedal just a little bit. We need to play more with the cleat position to find our happy place here. We've only had these shoes out for a couple of proper rides so far. We were immediately impressed with the pedal to shoe interface and we got great results out of the box with a pair of mallet DH pedals. Releasing the pedal is easy when needed and getting clipped in again is super intuitive and near foolproof. We particularly like that you can slide your foot onto the pedal and into the cleat, which is made possible by the rotating design of the Crank Brothers clip mechanism, but also aided by the deep and long cleat channel in the shoe. Moving on to the Stamp flat pedal shoe, the big news here is of course the BOA equipped variant. To the best of our knowledge, there are hardly any legit flat pedal shoe options featuring the rapid close and release system that has been adorning clipless shoes for years already. The rest of the shoe shares a lot of features with the clipless version, with two major exceptions. There is no shank in the flat pedal version, which should help promote a better feel for what the pedal is doing under the foot, and the rubber compound chosen here is stickier than the one found on the clipless shoe. On the topic of the rubber compound, Crank Brothers spent a lot of time trying to find the optimal balance between grip and durability. This has landed them a little bit short of the class leaders when it comes to all-out grip, but still on par with a number of other contenders in the category. 
The tread pattern has been developed specifically to match the shape and pin pattern of the Crank Brothers stamp family of flat pedals, but it will of course work with other pedals too. There are three variants to choose from, one with the BOA system and two with classic laces. There are plenty of different colors available as well, including the white version preferred by YouTube phenomenon Fabio Wibmer. Prices range from 129 to 179 US dollars. On the trail, the grip delivered by the stamp is good, but not quite on par with the class leaders, 510 Stealth and the recently released 2FO Roost from Specialized. The stamp works very well when you have good pressure between the shoe and the pedal, but it does not provide the same level of surface grip as the best in the category. This aspect manifests itself when you get a bit sloppy with your footwork, for example at the top of the pedal stroke when pedaling over rough terrain, or if your foot becomes unweighted for one reason or the other on gnarlier trails. This also makes the shoe a bit more sensitive to muddy conditions. We did test with several pedals with similar results, both Crank Brothers' own stamp pedals and others. As for the rest of the shoe, we really enjoyed the BOA system and the general feel of the sole. The shoe is just about stiff enough for longer rides without sacrificing much of the pedal feel. It will suit riders who like to know what the pedal is doing under their feet. The upper is very comfortable and provides a nice and snug fit without any pressure points. Crank Brothers put a series of small silicone dots at the back of the heel area to help with grip here. Those do make themselves known if you wear a thinner sock. There is good protection around the toe box and the back of the shoe, although the cuff is cut very low, which can leave you feeling a little bit exposed around the ankle. On the flip side, the shoe feels light and well ventilated on the foot. To conclude, we think that maybe the BOA version could benefit from a shank to provide a little extra stiffness and pedaling power that would perhaps be more congruent with the intent signaled by the lacing system and strap. In summary, the new Crank Brothers line of shoes is an impressive way to enter this market. Rich in features and easy to look at, it will satisfy a broad range of riders for everything from easy trail rides to full-on racing, in particular when it comes to the clipless version. A fully optimized interface for the mallet pedals provides great performance on the trail, while the elaborate construction ensures comfort and good power transfer. The flat pedal shoe delivers equally good comfort and plenty of pedal feel and will work well for all but the most demanding types of riding. Its grip falls just short of the class leaders, but with promises of better longevity, this may well be a trade-off that many riders are willing to make. In return, you get a shoe that looks the part and the unique opportunity for flat pedal riders to enjoy the benefits of the BOA system. BOA on a flat pedal shoe. You don't see that every day, do you? And on the topic of unusual days, a week ago we had three new bike releases on the same day. The mountain bike industry is definitely working hard to spoil us. Pivot updated their Mach 6 with a new frame and a staggering 14 different build versions, culminating with the Fox Live Valve SRAM Access Equipped Team Edition, checking in at an eye-popping $12,000. On the other scale of the price spectrum, Canyon's new Stoic Hardtail starts out at just $1,000, making it a good choice for those looking to get into the sport without breaking the bank. Last but not least, Evil has updated their offering with a steeper seat tube angle, longer reach, and a shorter offset fork. It still runs 140 mm of travel and can be built with either a 150 or a 160 mm fork. You can check out our detailed presentation of these three fresh new steeds right here on the channel for more. Want to ride like Nico Vink? Okay, so that's probably not gonna happen, but now you can at least build your bike to look like Nico's thanks to his all new signature series of parts from Reverse Components. There's a handlebar, grips, a seat and a seat post, all in a sleek new copper finish. Head to our site for more info. One bike to rule them all? Canyon has just updated their Spectral Trail Bike and it checks in with a very modern set of numbers. 150-160 mm of travel, a 64 degree head angle, a steep seat tube and generous reach measurements. Wait, did we say trail? Did we mean enduro? You can check out our launch coverage right here on the channel for more of our first impressions, then stay tuned for the long-term review dropping later. Nolly also has a new bike ready just in time for Christmas, the updated Chilcotin. Quite the renaissance for this model, as the last version was still running 26-inch wheels. Now with 29-inch wheels and modern geometry, Nolly says this one was designed primarily for enduro racing, although we're pretty sure it'll be good fun for just about any day out on the bike. Fox 38 Performance Elite, new Shimano EP8 motor with a 630 watt hour battery, XTSLX drivetrain and a Deity cockpit, all for 5,999 US dollars. That's impressively good pricing on Marin's new Alpine Trail E2. You can also opt for the 4,599 USD E1 version with RockShox suspension, a Shimano E7000 motor with a 504 watt hour battery and a Shimano Dior drivetrain. 
Both bikes feature modern geometry, mixed wheel sizes and 150-160 mm of travel. Despite their polarizing looks, G-Form's original Jello Cube covered knee and elbow protectors are actually very popular, in particular with less bro types of mountain bikers. Now those original pads had some inherent limitations to them when things got gnarly, so in an effort to produce something a little bit tougher and easier on the eye, G-Form has recently released two new families of protection. The pro rugged knee and elbow guards still use G-Form's XRD pads, but here they have been covered with a fiberglass reinforced fabric called Armortex. This fabric certainly tones down the wild looks of the XRD material and also increases the ruggedness of the guards. There is a double knit compression fabric used in the main sleeve of the guard with ventilated mesh around the back to help with airflow. In addition to silicon grippers along the hems of the sleeve, the knee guard now also features an adjustable strap at the top to help fine-tune the fit. The Pro Rugged guards are machine washable and CE 1621 certified to level 1. The knee guards retail for $79.99 US dollars, while the elbow version goes for $69.99. For those looking to step up the level of protection even further, G-Form has just launched the E-Line guards. This guard is designed for aggressive riders in technical terrain who spend long days in the saddle. The E-Line uses a smart flex material for shock absorption, but it is only one part of a completely new quad layer protective system. The smart flex padding sits atop a soft and ventilated foam layer that was designed for comfort, with further external armor text reinforcement that resists tearing. To finish it all off, a flexible yet firm shell allows the guard to slide over hard surfaces instead of hanging up. An active airflow system provides ventilation that traverses the four layers. In terms of the overall construction, the E-Line features a zipper design that can be put on and removed without taking off your shoes. Two big Velcro straps secure the guard in place and provide adjustability. Two wide silicon strips along the inside of the top hem help hold the guard in place. On the trail, the Pro Rugged guard marks a very positive evolution of the G-Form concept, bringing it more in line with traditional guards, but retaining most of the flexibility and comfort of the previous generation. We found that these guards run a tiny bit on the small side, so take that into account if you are typically between sizes. In action, the guard is comfortable and secure, with similar protective capabilities compared to most other guards in the lightweight sleeve type category. Certainly comfortable enough to be worn all day, while still providing enough protection to deal with relatively serious crashes. Like most other guards in this category, there is no extra padding along the sides of the knee, although the main pad does wrap around the joint to a certain extent. The E-Line provides much more protection than the Pro Rugged Guards, with the four layers of material creating a very secure feeling on direct hits. There are also auxiliary pads along the sides for extra lateral protection. We found that these guards would stay in place while riding, without hindering the pedaling motion much, if at all. You can certainly wear them for long days out, as intended. Being able to take them off and on without removing your shoes is also a bonus for those long climbs and all-day adventures. They are heavily preformed to follow the shape of the knee, which means that they tend to bunch up when the leg is extended, and with no material behind the knee to hold everything down, they can feel a little loose in this scenario. Whether or not this might cause the pad to move around in a crash is hard to tell at this point. We've thankfully managed to keep the rubber side down so far during testing. Overall, the E-Line is well constructed and inspires confidence, and it is very comfortable for such a robust item. With colder and wetter days upon us here in the Northern Hemisphere, well, not today maybe, we've been getting our winter gear ready again. We've been fans of the Fox Attack Pro water jacket for a couple of seasons already, but for this year it's been replaced by the Flex Air Neo Shell jacket, so we thought we should check that one out too. 399 US dollars may seem like an exorbitant amount of money to spend on a rain jacket, but if you are serious about riding in inclement weather, high performance gear can make your rides a lot more comfortable. The Flex Air Neo Shell is constructed from a three layer, waterproof and breathable fabric that provides protection from the elements while allowing hot air and sweat to escape more easily than before. All the seams are taped from the inside and there are three waterproof pockets for storing essentials. A large hood will fit over any helmet and can be adjusted in two different directions to ensure a snug fit. There are further adjustments available at the bottom hem and the cuffs can be synced down with Velcro. A flap in the back provides extra ventilation and you can also open a massive vent under each arm if things should get extra steamy on the climbs. On the trail, the performance measures up to the price tag. The inside of the Neoshell fabric is super soft to the touch and can be worn with just a short sleeve jersey without feeling clingy or sticky. The cut is semi-loose, generous enough to allow for extra layers to be worn underneath, but tight enough to not flap around in the wind like an old tarp. The hood stays put thanks to the multiple adjustments. The Neo Shell will keep you dry for hours, 
even in severe downpours. But the real party trick here is the breathability, making this jacket incredibly versatile. You can use it on windy days with variable weather without having to worry about constantly taking it off or putting it on. Open the extra vents if the sun pops out for a bit, or zip it all up again when the rain hits. Even if you are working hard, the NeoShell breathes really well and you won't find much, if any, buildup of sweat on the inside. Combine it with the latest Fox riding gear for a color-coordinated, season-specific look, shown here in the pine colorway, but also available in classic black. All right then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, season's greetings and happy trails.